Now I've already resized these um, to about 300 by 300. In this case, it's actually 300 by 227. That's fine. Okay. Now once you've done that, you go up here to your windows. Up here at the top. And you want to make sure animation is checked so that your animation box appears down here. Okay. Now whenever you open the animation box, the first frame will automatically be filled with whatever is queued in your layers area. Now over here in your layers area, you'll see that since this is the one we have active, this is the active window, and this is the layer that's on, that's your first frame. Okay, this little, this is your eye, which does what an eye does, you just either seize it, and you can't turn it off because it's locked. But if you turn the eye off, it disappears. Now because this layer is locked, you can't really change anything. So what we're going to do is, if you just double click on it, it actually wasn't in it. Of course, if you don't name it anything, you just press OK. The lock disappears, now it's an edible layer. Now for the eye, if you unclick it, it disappears. Click it, it comes back, and you see it changes accordingly over here in the animation menu. Okay, now to bring in the rest, you go grab your object tool, which is the top of the left hand side, or you can press V as a shortcut to get to it. And you just highlight the next frame, just click, hold it down, and drag right into the other one. And you just line it up. And as you and when you drag it in, you'll see that it automatically makes a new layer above it. Okay. And it's no longer locked because this is no longer a locked project. We no longer need that one. And do the same with the rest. I'm gonna do this quickly. Okay. You just drag them in. I did one other video and it took too long and they wouldn't accept it so I had to speed it up. Okay. <clears throat> this is your animation, which is the first frame shows whatever is being showed on your screen. Okay, whatever's active. Your layers are pretty simple. Just picture it like a stack of pancakes. Okay? You can only see the one on top. So if you turn off the one on top, you can see the one underneath of it. If you turn off that one, you see the one underneath that one. But you can't see these because there's other stuff on top of it. Okay? Pretty simple. Go ahead and turn them all off with your, with your bottom one. <clears throat> because that's what we're going to use for our first frame. And as you can see, when you change them, of course, it changes the first frame. Okay, it's, this is not rocket science here, guys. So, in your animation window, right here, you'll see a square. with like a little shortcut thing in the corner. If you click that, that's your new frame button. Now it looks like it duplicated it but it actually didn't. What it did was okay is this is the next frame and but because this is the picture that's still active okay it put it in the next frame. It's one last thing that Photoshop does for you. It likes to animate things for you and do it automatically. So you go to the second frame uncheck her whoops, uncheck her and check him. Now as you can see he's the only one that's turned on so you'll see him. Okay. Then go back over here and insert a new frame. Uncheck him and check the next one. And and do it for the rest of them. Okay, then you'll have six frames, six layers. And all different frames. This is a lot like rotoscoping people. Okay? <clears throat> each frame is considered a layer. So in Photoshop you want to have a layer for each frame. Unless you're using the same frame or same layer twice, like say it loops and then you want to use it again to go back to it. Okay, you can use it twice. Like, you know, if I was to make a new one and I wanted to use that one again, as you can see, it works just fine. Okay? It'll jump however you tell it to jump. Now, this, now these don't have to be in any particular order, but it makes it easier for me to keep track of which frame they are if I start from the bottom and work my way up. But you can jump around if you so desire. Okay. Let me get rid of that one. Just drag it right into the trash. Okay. <clears throat> Press play. And it's animated. It's way too fast, and my frame rate for my recording is probably not picking up how fast that really is. 
To change the speed, however, you can either change them one at a time. I want to change them all at once to show you. Um, if you hold down your curl key and click on them, or control key, you can highlight them all. Then at the very bottom, you see where it says zero and seconds. And there's a little arrow next to it. Click on that arrow. Each frame has one. And this gives you your delay. Tells each frame how long to stay on that frame before it jumps to the next one. Okay, now I'm changing them all at once. So they'll all be the exact same speed. Uh, about two tenths of a second. That's great. Which will slow it down. I don't know if you can see how fast that is and see every picture, but it works. Okay. Um, that's really all there is to it as far as making animation. Now to get it out to a, a GIF, all you got to do is go to File, right here, Save for Web and Devices. And for those like Image Ready, if you click that, you'll see a really familiar area. Leave all these to default if you haven't changed them. Okay. And that's it. Now this right here changes how many times it goes through, whether it goes through once, or it goes through forever, or it can change how many times it goes through before it pauses. And this does save it this way, so keep that in mind. Um, it, it, down here it'll tell you how big the file is, and all that wonderful stuff, and that you're saving it to a GIF, and once you're done, you save it. And you save it, I'll save mine to the desktop. Save it, we're saved, we're done. I'm not going to save that, my bridge is still open, and there it is. Good luck.